Welcome to the reset, everybody. I'm your host, David C. So today we just want to talk about a little um, video um, that I want to share with you guys. Very important. Very, 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 very important. Um, it has to do with uh, CBDCs. Now, for those that only don't, don't know what a CBDC is, a CBDC is a central bank digital currency. Now, central bank digital currency is a is a system that's been it's controlled by the government. Now, the government's going to be able to control what you do, how you spend your money, where you go, and every everything. Now, it's very important that you guys pay attention to this video, and at the same time, you know, do your research. Don't just take it from me, and you know, and run with it. This this. It's important, guys. Pay attention, because it's coming. It's no longer a conspiracy theory. It's real. All right? And also, guys, please like this video, share this content, and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell and um, so you guys can get notified when I launch a new video. If you go to China, uh, they're piloting it uh, a few years ago in Shenzhen. So I lived overseas. If you go to Shenzhen, back in 2017, they already had facial recognition cameras there. So if you jaywalked in Shenzhen, they would immediately detect that and send you a notification. And they would deduct money from your, what they call WeChat account. They, they use two main apps, WeChat and Alipay. So you can actually deduct your money directly from your account. This is four years ago. So this is not like some sort of conspiracy theory. It's not something that's going to happen 10 years into the future. This happened pre-corona in China. And so this system in China that exists is extremely advanced. They can detect if it's a man or a woman. They can detect, they can guess your age. They can detect what kind of car model it is, who the manufacturer is. This is a sort of technology that we see in all these dystopian sort of films and whatever. And people keep putting it off and thinking that this is something that's going to happen later in my kid's lifetime or my grandkids. It's already here. And if this gets implemented anywhere, especially in a Western nation, it's not going away. Israel is already talking about the fourth shot. Then they're going to be going to herpes, and they're going to ask if you're gay. They're going to be asking if you ate three pizzas this week because it's unhealthy. If you buy certain books in certain countries, your country doesn't like you. You'll lose points in the social credit score system. So this is already the reality of the world in certain places, and we need to be aware of that if we don't want that or if we do. And to be perfectly honest, anybody who wants this vaccine passport, it's a misnomer. It's total control. Everything you do or don't do will be calculated to the point where if they can detect your GPS signal, if you have a phone on you, they can detect who you're hanging out with. Oh, you're hanging out with somebody that said something bad nine years ago on Weibo, okay, like a Chinese equivalent to Facebook or something like that, right? Oh, you lose two points. Oh, you bought Japanese books. You lose five points because you don't like Japan. This is what is going to come here because it's already there. And we're doing that a little bit with contact tracing for COVID, aren't we? So that they can see where you're at and who you're with. The simple reality is, is that the technology that CSIS has and all these big tech corporations, they already know where you are. It's just that they don't want to shock the system too much and admit that they have it. Edward Snowden revealed all this back in 2013. He, he fled to Hong Kong. They wouldn't keep him there. So now he's in Russia. Yeah. But the NSA has all of your information. They know your Google searches from like February 9th, 2004 in a bunker in Colorado. Help me, Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> right? Trouble. Right? They have all this information. So, But they don't. Like in the U.S., they have the Fourth Amendment. They can't. They're not supposed to track you forever, yeah. right? So they pretend they don't have it. But they do. Yeah. If they really want to utilize it. The third way we think. CBDC can improve financial inclusion is through what we call programmability. That is, CBDC can allow government agencies and private sector players to program, to create smart contracts, to allow targeted policy functions. For example, welfare payment for example, consumption coupon, for example, food stamp. By programming CBDC, those money can be precisely targeted for what kind of people can own and what kind of use this money can be utilized, for example, for food. So this potential programmability can help government agencies to precisely target their support to those people who need support. So that way can also improve financial inclusion. Of course, I want to end with a caveat because CBDC is not a panacea. CBDC cannot solve every challenge in financial inclusion. 
there are some aspects of financial inclusion is not related to technology. For example, financial literacy, digital literacy. So CBCC has to work with other policies together to try to improve financial inclusion. I stop here. I think everyone can see at this point the unfolding quest for digital ID. They don't tend to think about issues such as these free social tech giants, data harvesting, data farming us. New concerns tonight about the social media giant's role in fake news and elections. We've seen this immense explosion of the digital and the data economy. The more data we have, the smarter our algorithms. Een digitale euro is een zegen voor de samenleving of een vloek voor de samenleving. Well, we have begun to see people dislocated from their accounts because of protest activity. But governments realize they have new tools that they've never had before. Is het een juiste keuze als het mogelijk wordt dat een centrale bank alle informatie krijgt over jouw en mijn transacties? The central bankers can dictate the rules of when and how you can use your money. If you have seen what has happened in the world in the past couple of years and you're not concerned by that level of control, then I don't think there's anything I could say to possibly bring that home to you.